Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. We're going to look at section 6.2, which is an introduction to rational exponents. And if we define what rational integers are, or excuse me, rational numbers, we know that those are just fractions, an integer in the numerator and an integer in the denominator. When we deal with rational exponents, it just means exponents that are fractions. As an example, if we have some base to the power of 1 over n, the denominator of that power fraction is the index of the radical. So we'd have the nth root of a. That means the same thing as a to the 1 nth power. So the power of a is 1, and the index is n. So if we want to convert a radical to an exponent, we can simply do that by writing it as a fractional exponent. We have 49 raised to the, or to the 1 half power, where the index, in this case, it's a radical of a square root of 2, or square root, it would be raised to the 1 half power. So why would we want to do that? Why would we want to convert a radical to an exponent? Well, one reason is we can rewrite this as a, a factor. So we can factor this down. This is a perfect square of 7 squared raised to the 1 half power. And if we know our rules of exponents, we can actually simplify it a lot easier this way than we could maybe working with a radical. And if we know our rules of exponents, I know that I can use the power rule here. And I can say, well, if I have a power raised to a power, I can multiply it. 2 times 1 half is just 1. Half of 2 is 1. So the answer is 7. And we already know that the square root of 49 is, in fact, 7. So we can see how our rules of exponents apply, because radicals are nothing more than a rational exponent, a fraction exponent. So what if we had something like this? I could simplify this, uh, the fraction of 1 16th as the radicand of a radical with an index of 4. I can rewrite this to be 1 16th raised to the 1 4th power, where this is raised to the first power. It's just one uh, factor of 1 16th. And the index is 4, 1 over 4. I have a rational exponent of 1 4th. And maybe I could say, well, 16 is or 2 to the fourth power. If I know my rules of exponents, I can distribute this to all the powers, 1 fourth, while 1 to any power is just 1. And we have 1 fourth times that power of 4, distributing it using the power rule. We get 2 to the first, which is just 2. So the fourth root of 1 16 is 1 half. All right, what if we have something like this? We have 16 to the 3 fourths. Well, if I have it as a rational exponent, it might be easier for me to write it as a, a radical. So I can say, well, the denominator is the index. So I have the fourth root of 16 to the third power. So there's two ways I could do it. I could write it as 16 to the third power, or I could write it as the fourth root of 16 raised to the third power. Now, before we explore why that is, let, let's break this up for a moment. I can break this number down by saying this is 3 quarters, which is 1 quarter of 3. I could write it as 16 to the 1 fourth power raised to the third. Using the power rule, that would give me 16 to the 3 quarters. Or I could write it as 16 to the third raised to the 1 4th power, because 3 times 1 4th is the same as 1 4th times 3. It gives me the same result, so I can write it either way. I can have this raised to the 3rd power, this here, the 4th root of 16 to the 3rd power, or I can have 16 to the 3rd power and then take the 4th root of it. What we have to assess is what's going to be easier for us personally to work through it. Well, <clears throat> I think if we take a radical first, use the index first, it's going to be easier to take the fourth root of 16 than to take the fourth root of 16 cubed, because 16 cubed is a huge number. So we can simplify it 
using this method or this method. I prefer this one right here because I feel that it's easier to get this number to be smaller before I cube it. So if we simplify this, 16 is 2 to the fourth. I recognize it as a fourth power number. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. And hopefully we see how that works from this to that. Now, if I did it this way, 16 cubed, that's a pretty big number. I might have to work it out on paper. And then to identify it or recognize it as a fourth power number might be a little bit beyond what we uh, might be able to recognize initially. So I prefer this method. So essentially, what we're looking at is if we have a fractional exponent, a rational exponent, a to the m over n, we can write it in one of two ways. We can take the nth root of a to the numerator's power, a to the m in this case. Or, and my preferred method is this right here, take the nth root of a, then raise it to the m power. So this is the power, and this is the index. No matter which way you write it, it's really up to you what you prefer. So let's uh, use this to simplify a couple of examples. Here I have 4 to the 3 halves power. Well, I look and see this index of 2, and I recognize 4 as a perfect square. So I'm going to write it as the square root of 4 raised to this power of 3. And now I can simplify it. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 cubed is 8. So we were able to simplify that. Now, if we look at this here, <clears throat> if I rewrote it, um, I identify the index is 3. So it's a cubed root of 8 to the fifth power. Now, I can put that 5 here, but 8 to the fifth power is a huge number. So I'm going to put it out here. And the reason why is because I identify 8 as a perfect cube. The cubed root of 8 is 2. And 2 to the fifth power is something that I could multiply out if I need to. But I know that 2 to the fifth power is 32. So simplified, it's 32. <clears throat> so hopefully we can see and use these rules to simplify radicals or to simplify uh, rational exponents, those fractional exponents. Let's look at another rule that we might come across. And it's something from our rules of exponents. And hopefully we're familiar with that. If not, definitely go back find a resource, and review these. If we have a to the negative m over n, this is just a to a negative rational exponent. Well, negative exponents, we know that we can take its reciprocal. That's one of our rules of exponents, which would be 1 over a to the m over n. And if we do it this way, then maybe we can simplify this using the rules that we just looked at. Let's look at this example here. We have negative 64 to the negative 2 thirds power. If I want to simplify that, the first thing I want to do is get rid of a negative exponent. So to get rid of that negative, I simply take its reciprocal. I would say 1 over negative 64 to the 2 thirds power. By changing the sign of that exponent, I took its reciprocal. Now it's just the 2 thirds power. Now I can use the rules that we just discussed. 1 to the 2 thirds power, well, the cubed root, let's write it out, the cubed root of 1 raised to the numerator of 2 over the cubed root of negative 64 raised to the power of 2. So essentially what I did is I distributed this 1 third power to each of these. Now, the cubed root of 1 is just 1. The cube root of negative 64, hopefully we identify that's an odd index. So it's OK to have that negative. And the cube root of 64 is 4. But it's still raised to that power of 2. And now, if I look at this, well, I can simply square 1. 1 squared is 1. And negative 4 squared, well, a negative times a negative is a positive, And 4 squared is 16. So negative 64 to the negative 2 thirds power is a positive 1 16th. Now, <clears throat> there are easier and quicker ways to go from this to that. But I wanted you to see each step. And you, after you do enough and practice and do enough repetition, you'll be able to skip some of these steps and apply these rules. Let's look at this one here. Here we just have a variable. And it's raised to the negative 1 third power. 
So what I can do is I can get rid of that negative by taking the reciprocal and changing the sign of that power, one of my rules of exponents. Now I can distribute this, or I can say, well, I can take the cubed root of 1 and the cubed root of x, because the index is denoted by the denominator here. Well, the cubed root of 1 is just 1. And the cubed root of x, well, I don't know what x is, so I'll leave it as the cubed root of x. Now, this power, the numerator is 1, and anything to the first power is itself, so I really don't have to assess that. So I'd get 1 over the cubed root of x. I really can't simplify this any further. Um, this actually shows a radical in the denominator, which isn't simplified. But for the purposes of explanation, we'll leave it right there. We're just working with the negative exponent, applying this rule. All right, let's look at this one here. Well, if we know our rules of exponents, to change a negative exponent that's already in the denominator, we could just move it to the numerator, take its reciprocal. Instead of 1 over that value, we put this value over 1, which would put it up in our numerator. So we could do that. Or we could essentially make it into a complex fraction. And we did cover complex fractions in the previous chapter. But let's not do that. Let's actually use our rule of exponent and move it up top. We have 2 and 3. These are just coefficients, just numbers. And this y, I take its reciprocal just by changing the sign of that fraction. And now I can write it as a radical. I know my index is going to be 7, so it's going to be 2 and 3. We have the index of 7, the seventh root of y. Now, I can put that fifth power in here, or I can put it out here. If I put it out here, I have to have it in parentheses. So we could write it like this, or we could write it like this. And there's nothing more I can really simplify, because 5 and 7 have no common factors. And the uh, power is less than my index. So that is an acceptable form. Either one of these would be fine. All right, <clears throat> let's look at some examples. Here we have 3 times the cubed root of 2x squared y cubed. Is there anything I can simplify there? Well, the first thing we want to do is maybe, <clears throat> because this looks kind of complicated, let's write it as a rational exponent. It would be 3 times the quantity of 2x squared y cubed raised to the 1 3rd power. Because this is my index of 3, that would be the denominator of its rational exponent. Now, if I wanted to simplify, I could distribute this to each value in there using the power of a product rule, one of my rules of exponents. So I'd have 2 to the 1 3rd power. I'd have x to the 2 thirds power, and y to the 3 thirds. Well, 3 thirds, that's just 1. So y to the first power. So if I were to simplify this, well, I could say, well, this is just 3 times y. And then I'd have 2 to the 1 third, x to the 2 thirds. Well, let's rewrite it back to a radical. Both of these have the same index a denominator of 3 as that power. So I can give them both the index of 3, 2 to the first power, x squared. So by using that rule, we were able to simplify this to this right here. Now, a shortcut we can use is if we know this is 1 3rd, we can say 2 to the 1 3rd, which we have here. So we skip that step. We can say x squared to the 1 3rd. Well, that'd be x to the 2 thirds. That brings us here. And y to the 3 thirds, well, that's 1. And if you recall in the last video, I said you could actually divide these. 3 goes into 3 one time. You can pull out a factor. And what did we do here? We ended up pulling out that factor of y. And because there was no remainder, none of them remained. Let's look at this example here. We can do the same thing. We can write this as a rational exponent. We have x to the fourth, y to the fourth. And that's being raised to the 1 4th power. That is our rational exponent. And now I can use the power rule and distribute it. Well, 1 4th of 4, 4 times 1 4th, or 4 fourths, is just 1x. y to the 4th raised to the 1 4th, distribute it to that. I get y to the 4 fourths, which is just y to the first power. This is simplified, xy. 
And if we go back, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 1 fourth of 4. Well, 4 goes into 4 one time, one factor of x. 4 goes into 4 one time, one factor of y, with no remaining. Nothing remains under the radical. And that's why, after simplifying it, there's no more radical that remains. Let's look at this example here. Maybe uh, we want to write this as a uh, rational x. Well, it's already written as a rational exponent. Maybe we want to take it to uh, a radical. So I identified that my index is 5. So this would be the fifth root of negative z. And again, we can use one of two methods. We can put that power of 4 here, or we can put it out here. I'm going to leave it in there because there's nothing I can really do to simplify that. Uh, well, actually, one thing I can do, or I should do, is put parentheses around that because I'm distributing that power of 4 to that negative. It's within these parentheses. And we could simplify that a little bit further. What is a negative to the fourth power? Well, anything to an even power is positive. So we could simplify it to the fifth root of z to the fourth. So we actually were able to simplify that and get rid of the negative. So now we have it as a radical. Really not much more we could do to that. So we're going to leave it just like that. Here, maybe we want to uh, use our rule of exponent and distribute this. Well, 4 to the 1 third, x squared to the 1 third would be x to the 2 thirds, y to the 1 third is y to the 1 third. And now we can see they all have the same index of 3. Well, one thing I could have done immediately is write this as the cubed root and go right straight to a radical. But I decided to distribute it first. I'm going to get the same result. 4 to the 1 3rd power is the cubed root of 4. x to the 2 thirds is the same thing as the cubed root of x squared. That power remains. y to the 1 3rd is the cubed root of y. So we could have just skipped the step by writing this as a cubed root immediately. But we used the power of exponents and then went to that step next. So honestly, that's the way to go. But you have to know your rules of exponents. All right, so let's apply our rules of exponents and maybe simplify it to a radical or simplify it as far as we can. Here we have a to the 2 elevenths times a to the 5 elevenths. Now, these are rational exponents. But if we're multiplying and they have the same base, our rules of exponents said we can just add those. Since they have the same denominator, we're ready to add them. So 2 elevenths and 5 elevenths is going to give me a to the 7 elevenths. Now, if I knew what a was, maybe I'd want to take it further. I could write this as a radical. My index is 11. That's in my denominator, a to the power of 7. And that's really as far as we can take that one. If we look at this one here, well, I can do this in several different ways if I know my rules of exponents. I could write this as a radical. My index is 2, and we don't need it when it's a square root, of 4u squared. And maybe this time I'm going to do it this way. Leave that power of 3 on the outside. Because I've identified 4 as a perfect square, and u squared, obviously, is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of u squared is u. And now I can raise it to the third power. So you see how we can go from an exponent form to a radical form and maybe simplify it a little bit. So 2 cubed and u cubed, using my power rule, power of a product, I'm distributing it to the powers. And now I can say, well, 2 cubed is 8, and u cubed is what it is. It's u cubed. Here is the simplified form of 4u squared to the 3 halves power. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this one. Here, we, it's already as a radical. Maybe we want to write it as an exponent, and then we can do something with it. So if I have the ninth root of y to the 6z cubed, I'm going to rewrite that as y to the 6z cubed raised to the ninth power. Now, by doing that, Maybe I can use my power of a product rule and distribute it. Well, oh, excuse me. That should be 1 9th because that's the index. It goes in the denominator of the power, 1 9th. And now I'm going to distribute it. So 6 times 1 9th is 6 9ths. And z, 3 to the 1 or to the 1 9th, was 
going to give me 3 ninths. I don't want to simplify it just yet. And hopefully, we identify, well, these fractions can be reduced. And by reducing these fractions, well, 6 ninths is the same as 2 thirds. And 3 ninths is the same as 1 third. Now, if we look at this, we were able to simplify those. Let's rewrite it back to a radical and see what we actually get. We have an index of 3 for both of them. So it's a cubed root of y squared z to the first power. Now, if we look at these two, they're actually the same value if we knew what y and z were. But we were able to lower the index and the powers. We were able to simplify them. A shortcut to this, if we understand the rules of exponents, a shortcut we can use is 6 over 9 and reduce the common factor of 3. So we'd get 2 over 3. Here we have 3 and 9. We can reduce that common factor of 3 and get 1 over 3. So if we understand it, we can actually simplify it a little bit quicker and go from here to here so that our powers and our index don't contain any common factors. What if we have something where they don't have the same index? Well, writing it as a rational exponent and using the rules of exponents can help us simplify something of this nature. If I have the fifth root of b squared, I can write that as b to the 2 fifths. Essentially, this is my numerator, and that's my denominator. The index goes in the denominator. If I do the same thing here, b cubed, to the 1 tenth power is b to the 3 tenths. Now I can actually simplify this using the quotient rule of exponents. If they have the same base, I can just subtract them, subtract their powers. So I'm going to rewrite it as b to the 2 fifths minus 3 tenths. That's essentially what the quotient rule says. Well, I know if I'm going to add or subtract fractions, they have to have a common denominator. So 2 fifths is the same as 4 tenths minus 3 tenths. And 4 tenths minus 3 tenths is 1 tenth in that power. So even though they had different indexes, by using our rules of exponents and being able to write it as rational exponents, we were able to simplify it down to b to the 1 tenth. Maybe we want to go back to a radical. Maybe we're doing the homework and the directions say, write your answer as a radical. We can say, well, the index is 10. So it's the 10th root of b to the first power. This 10th root of b is a lot nicer than what we started with. All right, let's look at this example here. Sometimes we'll have um, coefficients in the numerator and the denominator. What I recommend students do is to write those out front. Just move them out front. Because we're using the commutative or associative property of multiplication or division. Um, you know, this value times this value times that value doesn't matter what order we multiply them in because it's all multiplication in that numerator. Same thing, uh, or in the denominator, same thing in the numerator. So now I'm going to apply the rules of exponents. Once I've rewritten it so I don't get uh, lost in the values that are here. So now I'm going to use my rules of exponents. I'm going to use my quotient rule. I have x to the 2 thirds and x to the 1 third. They have the same base. Quotient rule says I can subtract them. So I'm going to leave this 7 and that 2. I've already dealt with those. 2 thirds minus 1 third. Well, they have a common denominator, so I can subtract them. 2 thirds minus 1 third is 1 third. Positive exponents stay in the numerator. All right, here I have y to the fourth, y to the sixth. I can use that quotient rule of exponents and subtract them. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Well, a negative exponent, we know we would take its reciprocal. Well, that just means move it to the denominator. So 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Well, that would mean two factors of y in a denominator. It's reciprocal. So hopefully you understand that rule of a negative exponent. Take its reciprocal or put it in a denominator. So now we've simplified it. We have 7x to the 1 third divided by 2y squared. If we were asked to put our answer in a uh, radical notation, well, the only radical is this fractional exponent right here. I can have it as 7 and the cubed root of x divided by 2y squared. 
So depending on what you're asked to do, you could leave it as rational exponents, or you can write it as a radical. Either answer is going to be dependent on what you're asked to do. So this has been section 6.2, working with rational exponents. Thank you for watching.